When people from New York to New Guinea vote in elections, they have Australia to thank for a reform that changed democracy itself. The democracy sausage. What? You know, the sausage sandwich you buy when you vote. It's the best thing about elections. Sometimes you even get free onions. A reform that changed democracy itself, even more than the democracy sausage, with or without free onions. The modern secret ballot. On the 27th of August, 1856, the colony of Victoria unveiled the secret ballot. But before we tell you how totes amazeballs it was, you need to know about the British open voting system it replaced. Yes, what is it? Um, I'm voting. British voters would gather outdoors and raise a hand when their candidate's name was read out. A winner was announced and then the losers could spit the dummy and demand a formal vote. Voters would then write their candidate's name on any old piece of paper and hand it to an official who'd announce who they'd voted for. As MPs weren't paid, candidates were inevitably wealthy landowners. They knew who'd supported them and knew how to punish those who hadn't. I say, Jones, you didn't vote for me. I'm revoking your lease. Get off my land. The unfairness of British elections went beyond voter intimidation. Women couldn't vote, nor could men who didn't own or rent sufficient property. In 1838, British working class leaders signed the People's Charter, which demanded electoral reforms, including the vote for all men. And to ensure voters weren't pressured by their landlords or bosses, Chartists, as supporters of the Charter became known, called for the secret ballot. The government responded to a number of Chartist uprisings by imprisoning the movement's leaders, with dozens sent to Australia as convicts. Australia's first elections were held in New South Wales in 1843. Australian elections were commonly held in pubs, with candidates providing those who voted for them with free drinks and food. Sausages? Maybe, who cares? Many of the 1843 races pitted Catholics against Protestants, and hostility increased as the free booze flowed and officials posted hourly vote counts. In Sydney, Irish Catholic supporters of Maurice O'Connell armed themselves with fence palings and demolished William Wentworth's campaign tent. Whalers supporting Wentworth attacked the Irish with harpoons. One death was recorded during the riots that followed. This was democracy Australian style. Governor Gipps reported to London, The elections in general went off very well. Many migrants to Australia were working class and supported the Chartist agenda. Come the gold rush, Victorian diggers who paid a mining tax but couldn't vote demanded the vote for all men. Some also called for the secret ballot. The Victorian public swung behind the miners after the 1854 Battle of the Eureka Stockade. Victorian politician William Nicholson secured support for the ballot from a narrow majority of his Legislative Council colleagues, with Premier Haynes resigning in disgust. Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania all passed secret ballot laws in 1856, with Victoria first to go live with a new voting system designed by a lawyer for the Eureka rebels, Henry Chapman. Government officials gave voters a standard form, with candidate names printed in alphabetical order. Each voter would then enter a private stall, cross out the names of candidates they didn't support, and place their vote in a sealed box. There were no drunken crowds or hourly updates to inflame tensions. Even the ballot's former opponents acknowledged its success. In 1856, South Australia gave all men the vote in elections for the new Legislative Assembly. And in 1858, William Boothby produced a ballot that allowed South Australian voters to place an X in a box beside their candidate's name. London's Times newspaper thundered that anonymous voting was a vile system for cowards and liars. But in 1872, Britain adopted Boothby's brainchild and US states embraced the Australian ballot, as they called it, from 1888. The Australian ballot is now used around the globe. And the democracy sausage was the icing on the cake. 
Oh, for goodness sake, stop with the mixed metaphors. What have you got against sausages and cakes? Why shouldn't Australians be able to enjoy a sausage and cake every few years? Democracy sausage was the 2016 Australian word of the year, even though it's two words. Democracy sausage. Democracy sausage. Democracy.